the biggest discovery that first six months in my business was the importance of my email list. And that really led to my success back then. And it's still the major source of my income for myself and my clients today. Welcome back to the Lisbon Lifestyle. I'm your host, Igor Kapitz, and today I have the pleasure and the honor to uh, be speaking to Terry Dean, a true legend in the space. If you've been marketing online for more than a few years, you've probably heard the name somewhere. He's probably been referenced to you by some other guru um, because, you know, we're, we're again, we're talking to a living legend. So um, it's a true pleasure and an honor. Uh, Terry, welcome to the Lisbon Lifestyle. Well, thank you for bringing me on the list building lifestyle. Yeah, uh, it's uh, quite quite incredible. Um, I'm grateful uh, to our mutual friend. Um, I think it was Doberman Dan who made the introduction. Um, who we also hosted them on the show a couple of years back. In fact, he was one of the first 20 guests I think that we've ever done uh, because initially the show didn't really have a guest format. It was just introduced a bit later. So grateful to him for that amazing guy. And by the way, if you're looking for a great copywriter for your next project, you should reach out to Doberman Dan uh, because he's um, he's one of the few remaining uh, Gary Halbert students, I think, um, and a, a, another living legend in the space. So, um, but that's enough about Doberman Dan. So, Terry, you've been you've been this game, the make money online game, since 1996. Just so you understand how crazy this is for me. I was born in 1988. Uh, in 1996, I was still living in Ukraine. And the I think the pinnacle of technology uh, that I've seen was a portable cassette player and a VCR. That was like the most you could expect. And, uh, you know, there was no no talk about the Internet uh, ever. In, in the household or in the media. So now you've been already on the forefront of online marketing and, you know, the interweb. So how how's that like? How was it back then? What was different or same about the industry and the methods used and, and the, the landscape in general? Well, we go back to 96 and you have to remember, this is the very early days of the internet. People might know in the US, AOL sending out all of those free disks. Hey, for, take your free trial of AOL. Or, or I started with CompuServe, which is a company that's long gone and using slow dial-up modems where you would have never even thought about having video online. Now, everything today is video. There's no chance you could even play the video back then when I first started online. Um, but one of the smartest things I did in the beginning, which really led to my success long-term, yeah. was I got a hold of some materials by Gary Halbert. I got a hold of some materials by Jay Abraham, Bill Myers, some of the other direct mail legends. And one of the first things that I said was I'm going to look at everything they're teaching about direct marketing and how much of it is going to apply to the internet. And I found quite happily that the majority applied to the internet, what was working in direct mail. Of course, there's little adjustments, there's little changes that we make, but what they were teaching worked online. So I took it online. And you mentioned that in your intro about Dan, who's a friend of mine. He was actually one of the protégés of Gary Halbert. So Gary Halbert's materials were some of the things that got me started online. Even though Gary Halbert, I don't, at the time when I was reading his materials, he didn't say anything about the internet at that time, but everything he taught about direct marketing applied to the internet. Whereas they were building up direct mail lists, I started building up an email list. And that was uh, my start online. Same thing that you teach today, a list building lifestyle. The biggest discovery that first six months in my business was the importance of my email list. And that really led to my success back then. And it's still the major source of my income for myself and my clients today. Yeah, that's that's pretty impressive i think given that the internet is famous for churning out fads right like every year there's these two to three uh, fads and it it seems like these fads are speeding up as as i grow older right like there used to be a fad used to last five years now a fad is probably lasting five months um and and you can't really build it's, it almost feels like everything is a shifting sand where you can't really make a long-term play because in six months time something might happen like as we're 
filming this, you know, there's talks of TikTok getting banned. While I know there's a lot of people who rely on TikTok heavily uh, for their, you know, online presence and and everything else. Um, so that is quite fascinating. I'm really happy. Obviously, it serves us well here at the Lisbon Lifestyle that, you know, uh, having an email list back then was just as important as it is today. I think today it's even more important because it's one of the few remaining ways to to have control over your audience, right? That, you know, obviously if you've got like a, a YouTube channel with 500,000 subscribers, you know, that YouTube channel can be shut down. Uh, if you've got a Facebook uh, account with like a large group, uh, that account can be banned. I know a few people who not only got their uh, ads account banned, but also their personal account accounts banned at one point. So having a list is, uh, is one of those super, super important things to almost to build a moat around what you're doing, right? It is. I'm going to disagree with you slightly. Not the importance of a list, of course, but the fact that you said it's even more important today than it was then. I'm going to say it's always been premier importance. I'm always going to say pretty much now I've been doing this. How long is this? This is 27 years now that I've been doing this and then having clients and hundreds of different markets over that time. The list is the number one thing, and it has been this entire time, in the vast majority of the markets. I have a few clients where direct connections, especially if they're selling a high ticket service, like a $10,000 a month right, service, right. it's more direct selling that they're doing than email. Yeah. But the vast majority of my clients, their email list is their income. And everything else is a way to help them build their email list. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so true what you're saying about people who, who sell something really high ticket. Uh, they're doing more uh, direct selling because I remember back in 2019, I was a member of the Geo Polishes Genius Network. And I went there because I wanted to make great connections, but I quickly learned that half the room were actually service providers, you know, financial advisors, insurance people, people who do your estates and people who teach you how to sell, people who teach you how to speak. And all of a sudden I was like, interesting so half of this room is actually trying to sell me products and services because i'm a high ticket high quality buyer for that I, and i fit into their ideal customer avatar they're not here to mastermind with me uh they're not here to like share techniques they're actually here to demonstrate their value to to build a connection with me and then pitch me with a service and uh that was a big uh uh, it kind of put me off, if I'm honest, because if I'm paying 30 grand a year, I felt that I shouldn't be paying 30 grand a year just to be upsold into more stuff. Now, there was no hardcore upselling in the room, obviously, but you could, I mean, you could read between the lines, you know, like you could feel it that some of them want, want to take you out to lunch or whatever. And all of a sudden, after the event, they hit you up with a random text message, you know, wanting to set up a call and wanting to find out what you do and, and all that stuff. And uh, and and there were some crazy upsells there, there too, like not, not the most practical stuff that you'd imagine, um, where uh, like art, for example, right? Again, the least practical thing of all, but uh, there was this guy who had this really interesting style that ended up building a business of selling this uh, art for entrepreneurs uh, for for lots of money. And um, it, and you're right. If you're selling something ultra high ticket like a service, you're relying less on your list. Uh, but if you're not ultra high ticket, you're definitely like everything is a slave to building the list almost everything like these days anything i do ever my first thing my first concern is how am i building a list off of that you know like and and running traffic of any kind to any page that isn't capturing an email address is is a huge uh downturn for me <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> it is well i'll even mention it this way because i have some of my clients especially in consumer markets and i'll mention that up front that I've helped a lot of clients in internet marketing type niches, but I have more joy, I think, today in many cases in a lot of the consumer niches. And consumer niches mean things like I have clients who help people improve their tennis game or help them learn Spanish or help them train their dogs or things like that. And I have clients also in specific business to business industries. So a lot of different variants that I've helped people with. But in some of these markets, we're running ads directly to a low cost offer for like a $49 offer, okay? So we're running Facebook ads direct to a sales page for $49. We found in many cases that's more successful for us than running to an opt-in 
on Facebook ads. Okay, so we're running this, but even then we're thinking that what we're doing is we're building a buyer's list. Right. We don't even care about profiting off of the $49 sale. That $49 sale is to help us pay for the advertising. That's what it's there for. We might earn some profits on the upsells, okay? But we're building a list of buyers in that case. So even in that case where we're selling something, we're still focused on the list.